Welcome to RWM Blue Water Ministry. This is your host Bob Manuk and uh, tomorrow is Christmas Eve 2018 and so this is going to be a Christmas message and uh, Christmas has a great significance for Christians around the world. <clears throat> we celebrate the birth of the Savior and the good news is is that God is has an unfailing love for people and He's looking for a way to get them into the kingdom of God. And it's a great revelation to understand that God's not trying to keep anybody out. He sent his son Jesus to die on a cross, uh, shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins, that anybody who accepts the, the, the work that Jesus did uh, is clothed in his righteousness, becomes a child of God, and, uh, and uh, is, is a member of the kingdom of God. And, and are heaven bound. But there can't be an Easter with the crucifixion and the resurrection without Christmas. The, the child had to be born. And it couldn't just be anybody. I mean, he's not a child like you or I because he was born of a virgin, overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and then she was with child. And so what, what I'm going to look at here is uh, in the Gospels, you have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's only two Gospels that deal with Christmas, and that's Matthew and, and Luke. And in the Luke account, it talks about the shepherds and the angelic host coming out and, and visiting with the shepherds to announce the birth of the Christ. Uh, in Matthew, it doesn't mention the shepherds, but it talks about the, the wise men who, who, who came. And... Uh, you know, each of the four Gospels have its, has its own emphasis. And um, <clears throat> Matthew uh, was, was written by Matthew, the tax collector, uh, who, um, of course, was a Jew and was with Jesus, walked with him. And the emphasis of his book is highlighting the prophecies from the Old Testament and looking at how they were fulfilled in Jesus' life. Uh, the other books have their own emphasis and stuff. But for, for, for today, we're going to look at Matthew. Before we go to Matthew, uh, we're actually going to go to some of the prophecies. So first of all, in uh, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, written by the prophet Isaiah, uh, roughly about 700 years before the birth of Christ. So in Isaiah 7 and verse 14, it says, All right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So, in the midst of this whole story, uh, and there's a, there's a lot going on for, with, with uh, the king, and, and there's going to be a battle, but in the middle of this here, there's a prophecy given. And, and this is one thing about the Word of God. I mean, you know, one could, could hope and wish that, oh, everything was just laid out in one, one, one storyline. But the fact of the matter is, the whole Word of God is just sprinkled with nuggets and truth and prophecy. And uh, sometimes it's like a puzzle. You, you, you need to study it. to build. It's, it's like if, if, you, if you look at, it at a thousand piece puzzle, you don't put it together just like this here. It takes time and research with the pieces to put it all together. That's with the Word of God. Uh, you need to get the Word of God in your life. You need to spend time with it. And as you start to put the pieces together, there's a there's a, a vision that comes forward and it comes out of it. So in this case, it says the virgin shall be with child. The next uh, chapter over, uh, two chapters, ver chapter 9, verse 1. It says, nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. So again, uh, Isaiah is prophesying about the future. He says, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. And then later on in verse 6, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
So again, a prophetic message about the Prince of Peace. So, then I'm going to move over now to uh, Micah. Micah again was a prophet uh, functioning around 700 years uh, before the birth of Christ. And he was a prophet to Judah, as, as Isaiah was. And in, in, in Micah 5, verse 2, it says, But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. So this is talking about a ruler uh, for Israel coming out of Bethlehem. So again, um, there's these nuggets of prophecy that are, that are kind of sprinkled through. And um, so for, for those, uh, the Pharisees and the uh, people who studied the Word of God would, would be taking these, these nuggets out and trying to interpret them. And uh, all right, so then we're going to go to um, Hosea. And in Hosea, chapter 11, verse 1. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. So this, you can imagine how this would have confounded some of the people, because they're saying, well, hold it, we're, we're hearing that the servant of God, the Holy One, will come out of Bethlehem. But this is saying that, actually, uh, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. Um, so finally, then, uh, we see in uh, Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 15. This is what the Lord says. A cry is heard in Ramah, deep anguish and bitter weeping. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for her children are gone. Okay, so there's four distinct prophecies, all dealing with different things. And um, so now we're going to flip over to the book of Matthew. And uh, we'll start uh, with Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And uh, there's a little asterisk beside Jesus. And when you look down at the bottom, uh, the Jesus means the Lord saves. Anyway, so then it carries on. All of this occurred to fulfill. Now this is what Matthew's saying. Like I said, Matthew concentrated on the prophecies. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But... He did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. So Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. Now, I'm just going to sidestep for a moment. The account in uh, Luke talks about that night that the baby was born, and some of the angels appeared to the shepherds and said, Today... A child is born. 
and the shepherds got up to go to Bethlehem to see this thing. And uh, they saw the Christ child, the Savior of the world, and they rejoiced, and they went away rejoicing and saying that it is as the angels said it was. Praise to Jesus. So we'll take, we'll take out, we'll return to Matthew now. And uh, so Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? And in Bethlehem and Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem and the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had been seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house, and I want to just underline there the house. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, oftentimes we see paintings or pictures of the nativity scene, and we see Joseph and Mary and the babe in, in the uh, manger. And we see the shepherds, we see the wise men. But in reality, if you, if you look this over, the shepherds were there the same day Jesus was born. Uh, the wise men were far off. Uh, they saw a star, they interpreted what that star meant, and they calculated that, all right, they, they believed that this was the birth of the Messiah. And they started on their journey. They had to pack up, they went on their way. We don't know how long it took them to get there. Uh, from the time they saw the star, I mean, I don't know, I mean, it's not really clear, um, but one thing's for sure. When the shepherds went to see Jesus, they were in, uh, there, there was no room in the inn, and so they, they were in the stables, and Jesus was laid in a manger. And one would presume that that situation only existed for a day or a couple of days or three days at the most, uh, but eventually they would have, there would have been room in the inn as people were, were leaving. They would have got in there. And after some time in the end, then they would have found a house. And this, that, that's what this says, is they entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, uh, with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. So by this time, Joseph and Mary are in a house. Um, now Herod asked them about the time when it all happened. We'll carry on reading verse 12. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream. Now I'll tell you, dreams are very significant in, in the Christmas story. Uh, but God warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. So after the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt. So in other words, you see, he didn't even hang around. He, he obeyed God, and, and he, they packed up that night, and they were, and they were gone. Uh, so that night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had really spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. So Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under. So just in terms of the timing, um, I'm going to guess that uh, Herod wasn't taking any chances. So let's just say if it took three to six months for the wise men to get there to Jerusalem, uh, and then of course they went and sought out the babe, 
and and then they left. Now, by the time Herod realized they're not coming back, uh, that could be like nine months after the birth of Jesus. Could be a year. Could could be eighteen months. I don't know. I mean, assuming that it was nine months or a year, um, you know. So Herod just said, "All right, kill all the boys two years and under," just because he wanted to make sure he had it covered. So, uh, what this signifies when he says two years and under. And that would have been a year after the, the child's birth. The, the main thing I'm pointing out here is that it was not on the day Jesus was born. Um, so he sent his soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. And so uh, Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned in a dream, again, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophets had said. He will be called a Nazarene. Anyway, um, you know, sometimes people wonder about the, was it real, the virgin birth? Uh, the whole Christmas story, is it just a story or... Did it in fact happen? And what I want to present to you is, is that uh, through the Gospels it's been documented Jesus' life. And Matthew highlights very much here how it was a fulfillment of prophecies. Uh, Jeremiah's prophecy was 600 years before Christ. Hosea and Micah and Isaiah were all about 700 years before the birth of Christ. So these are hundreds of years before Jesus was born, and yet the, the scriptures show how Jesus' birth and life fulfilled prophetic messages that were given way back when through the prophets. Now, I don't know for you if, if, if you know, for those people who believe, uh, there's no talking about talking them out of it. When, when a person knows that Jesus is, is the, child, the child of God, the Son of God, and, and he has saved us and, and cleansed us from our sins, and, and clothed us in his righteousness and made us a child of God. When you've had that experience, it is a real experience. And once you've experienced it, like there is no dissuading you. Suddenly you know that you know that you know. And uh, so therefore we accept the Christmas story. For those who haven't had that experience and who are wondering, that's why I want to bring to your attention the prophecies from 600 years ago and 700 years before the birth of Christ that spoke of the one who was coming. And what does it prove? That God was in this. God was in this whole plan and, and giving these prophecies to the prophets so that they could bring it forth and then letting Jesus' life fulfill that. And then since then, the impact it's had on the world. I mean, look. That this is not some little thing that happened at one little point. I mean, Jesus is known worldwide. Uh, our calendars reflect the life and death of Christ. Like, he has had an, a worldwide impact. And as much as people love Christianity or hate Christianity, the fact of the matter is so much of the world has accepted it. And, and, and does lives according to the truth of this so many so many western countries have their uh, laws based on geo-christian principles and they are growing when you look at migration where are the people leaving people are leaving places that are in darkness and they're coming to the nations of light you know we've uh, you may have heard you know uh, people who, who who deal with addictions and stuff and and uh, like Alcoholics Anonymous, they said they, they have a 12-step program how to get through. So I heard somebody say, well, it's a one-step program. You're in darkness, and you take one step into light, and you do that through Jesus. 
So, for all the things that God has done for us, uh, the greatest is, is giving Jesus on our, on our behalf to meet the needs of the world, to bring us into light, to bring salvation to us, salvation, healing, deliverance, wholeness. And uh, Jesus, you know, John 3.16, For God so loved the world, for God so loved the world that he gave us one only Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but would have everlasting life. That is the gift of God. And that's what we celebrate, the birth of Christ. And uh, so, Christmas time, 2018, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, I wish you the full knowledge of the Christ child, Jesus in your heart, forgiveness of your sins. And I pray that uh, each one of you will have experienced that. Uh, if you haven't, if you have not experienced it and you want to, there is a video on this website uh, called Making Jesus the Lord. Now, if you say the prayer that's in there, uh, there's instructions on that, that inviting Jesus into your life and, and making him Lord of your life. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas came, God gave, and Jesus came to be that sacrifice for us. He lived a sinless life that we couldn't live so that in the end he could pay the price that we couldn't pay. This is Bob Manuka at RWM Blue Water Ministry declaring blessings on you and yours in Jesus' name until we meet again. Amen.